All right, lads, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a look at an actual good vehicle for once. No more molding from Sarko. That's right, if you've been playing top tier War Thunder recently, especially after the latest update, you've probably seen the battlefield has been absolutely spammed out by Type 90B Fuji's, the newest top tier premium added to the Japanese tech tree. It appears, ladies and gentlemen, that Gaijin have finally done the impossible. They have given a man a nation a good premium vehicle. They failed to do it with the Israeli tech tree, but by God, Gaijin have knocked it out of the park with the Type 90B. So a little bit of a backstory, the Type 90B was developed to be a highly mobile vehicle, both in the fact that the tank is light and nimble, but also in the fact that the tank can easily be moved around by sea lift and air lift capabilities, as it was intended to be fighting on the Japanese islands, which are quite hilly and obviously several islands, so they need to be moved between both of these islands rather easily. The way the Japanese got the tank to be so portable is by giving it not the greatest amount of armor, but as we'll see in the footage and from this review, the lack of armor isn't a major issue for the Type 90B. Anyway, enough dilly-dallying, let's get into the stats. So the Type 90B is coming in the 7th rank of the Japanese tech tree, and it sits at battery rating 11.0 in arcade, realistic, and sim. You buy this tank off the Guardian store for the price of 60 British pounds or around 70 dollars. You get the tank, 2,500 Golden Eagles, and 20 days of premium time. The Fuji being a rank 7 premium does mean it can grind the rank 8 Japanese vehicles. But just be aware at the time of recording, there are only two rank 8 Japanese main battle tanks, so it is quite a large investment just to grind out two vehicles essentially. The lineup for the Fuji is also excellent. We have the TKX prototype, the two Tech Tree Type 90s, as well as the Type 90 Fuji. You also have some light vehicles like the Type 16 and the Type 89. And you also have the fantastic Type 81 SBAA, which is borderline overpowered. For closer support, I'd recommend taking the F4EJ. This doesn't get any advanced air to ground munitions, but it gets a absolute shit ton of Mighty Mouse rockets or the more powerful Zunis. You could up tier this vehicle up to 11.3 and take out the new squadron vehicle, the F5E FCU, the TIE vehicle added in the latest update as this vehicle does get some guided air -to ground munitions. Alternatively, if you don't like fixed wing aircraft, you can take out the battery rating 11.0 AH-64DJP. This is a license built version of the American Apache, essentially being a copy and paste, except this Japanese version lacks the MAW, the Missile Approach Warning. Apart from this lack of a small survivability feature, the 64 does also get the AGM-114 Hellfire K missiles, giving you all of the potency of the American Apache at a much lower battery rating. While I do see the appeal on taking this thing up to battery rating 11.3 to use that juicy AGM-65B, I'd still recommend people staying at battery rating 11.0. This dear viewer is because you can face the 10.0 Soviet Mongoloids. Those filthy unwashed heathens in the Object 292s, T-72 Terms and 2S-38s make for some very easy XP and kills. The Type 90's 4 second autoloader and DM33 main round can easily cleave through every opponent you come across and especially the Soviet mains. So why up to yourself to 11.3 when you can miss out on this easy XP train? Anyway boys if you're interested in finding out more about the Type 90B Fuji then stick around for the rest of the video. But first a word from our sponsor. GE for War Thunder is a long term sponsor of this channel. The app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store and you complete various simple tasks in exchange for small amounts of Golden Eagles, mainly answering surveys and watching ads for other apps. I personally use this app in between games or whilst I'm side climbing. You aren't going to win enough to buy a top tier premium, we can easily unlock a few modifications to make a stock grind easier or purchase a day of premium if you have a free Saturday. Download the app from the link in the description and use my code for some extra free Golden Eagles. Thanks again to GE for War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Alright lads, welcome back. Rather surprisingly to me, the Type 90 is actually powered by a two-stroke diesel engine. It has two turbochargers as well, and a single supercharger for that extra bit of power. The reason they went with a two-stroke is because it is much lighter than a four-stroke, and gives it a higher power-to-weight ratio with the downside being it is much less efficient than a four-stroke engine, but if you're only going to be fighting on your own home islands, I guess the Japanese didn't really think it was much of an issue. Anyway, it has nothing to do with anything to do in-game, 
Luckily enough for us War Thunder players, we don't have to pay Guardian for our fuel, at least not yet. But anyway, the Type 90 Beast engine produces 1,500 horsepower, which is incredibly high considering it is a two-stroke engine. It must produce an absolute shitload of uh, exhaust gases. Anyway, with the tank's weight of 50 tons, it gives us a power to weight ratio of a whopping 29.9 horsepower per ton, making it probably the main battle tank with the highest power to weight ratio in War Thunder. And as you can imagine, I don't have any issue with this whatsoever. The mobility of the Type 90 Bs are fantastic. They have 73 km per hour top speed going forward and a 34 km per hour reverse speed. This makes the Type 90B fantastic in the early stages of a game. You can really make a huge effect on a match. You can get into a good spot, good hold down position, you can even get to a good ambush spot and let for the enemies to come to you. And as we'll see very shortly, you have a fantastic gun to easily dispatch your enemies. The Type 90B also has a variable suspension, I guess. The first and the last road wheel can be altered. Just bear in mind, in War Thunder, you have to be fully stopped to use this feature. But it does allow you to get a little bit better gun elevation as well as gun depression. This of course is a feature on most Japanese main battle tanks as it allows it to navigate the rough rocky terrain much easier giving them a little bit better gun depression. In War Thunder though this is largely a bit of a gimmick because the Type 90B is such a fast mobile vehicle you don't really want to be bogging yourself down in a hold down position as this is kneecapping your own in game performance in my opinion. Every tank needs some downsides, so what is the flaws of the Type 90B? Well, it is of course going to be the survivability. Being a purely self-defense force, the Japanese probably never intended the Type 90s to be like an expeditionary vehicle, where you do need protection from infantry and hostile populations. So for a vehicle intended for fighting at high altitudes in the Japanese mountainous areas, having a tank that was incredibly mobile rather than incredibly well protected was almost certainly seen as the better alternative. Anyway, in War Thunder, the Type 90B is quite vulnerable. As you can see from this image, the driver and the gunner are located basically one in front of the other. So a shot coming into the right hand side of the Type 90 is the best way to kill this tank in a single hit, as obviously two of the three crew members are going to be knocked out. Penetrating the Type 90B is actually quite easy. And we can see from this image, you can see that the upper frontal plate does get composite armor as well as the turret cheeks. But just like the Challenger 2, the gun breaches the size of Hokkaido, and any enemy incoming round is almost certainly going to penetrate your gun breach, killing a crew member and knocking out the gun. If we compare the Type 90's composite armor layout to that of the Leopard 2A4, we can see that the German design has much thicker armor on its turret. And bear in mind the Leopard 2A4 is not well known for its great turret protection. The ammunition of the Type 90B is stored in two areas. The main ammunition bustle, which is the turret, holds 18 rounds. The secondary ammo stowage is located in the hull next to the driver, the opposite way round from the Leopard 2. Because the survivability of the Type 90 is so bad, I wouldn't limit yourself to carrying just 19 rounds or the ammunition in the bustle. I'd take a bit more, maybe 24 rounds. There's no point worrying about an ammo detonation when you are basically dead in a single hit anyway. But if we make a little bit of a visual demonstration against the armour of this vehicle, we can see that against the BMP-2M's 30mm gun, the APFSDS rounds at least can penetrate the turret ring at point blank range. But for the most part, the majority of the frontal aspect of this tank is proof against the small calibre infantry fighting vehicle guns in War Thunder. However, if we step things up a bit and go to the 3BM-42 Mango round fired by many Soviet tanks, but at this very man, this is a 10.0 Sabo, but we can still penetrate pretty much everywhere on the Type 90, with the exception of those fairly thick turret cheeks. And finally, against a high explosive round, the 3 OF-26 found on all of the Soviet 125mm guns, we can see that the driver's port, turret ring, and the gunner's main sight are all massive weak spots, which can be killed with a chemical munition. So overall, the survivability of the Type 90B isn't great in my opinion, but this is like a Leopard 1, a little bit more advanced. You aren't really intended to be getting shot at in this thing. Make one or two shots and then relocate. You've already got that fantastic mobility. So if you are getting shot in this thing, especially on the wider open maps, then there's no one really to blame apart from yourself. 
This does present one of the major issues with the Type 90B though, and that is on the smaller, more urban maps in War Thunder. Like Gaijin really has a, uh, a real hard on to adding recently. On the flat urban maps, it does pose quite a big issue for the survivability of the Type 90B, as there's nowhere really to hide, and you can't really use your mobility as effectively, as you obviously have a lot of choke points and a lot of ambush positions. On these more urban maps, I'd recommend being a little bit more cautious and not really exploiting your top speed. You don't want to be like a very high battery rating version of a Hellcat, just holding W and getting yourself killed by a more heavily armoured opponent. But the lack of survivability of the Type 90B is more than made up for by the enhanced mobility in my opinion. So I've been hyping up the Type 90B, I said it's got pretty decent mobility and slightly below average survivability. So why am I simping so hard for this tank? Well, it is the gun and the autoloader. Like the Americans and pretty much everyone in NATO, the Japanese bought a license for the 120mm Rheinmetall gun and started manufacturing it in Japan. In fact, the 120mm L44 gun is the only thing about the Type 90 which was not domestically designed. The tank can carry 42 rounds of ammunition in total, with 18 of those rounds, as we've already covered, being stored in the turret bustle, with the remaining 24 rounds being stored next to the driver. The vertical guidance are actually pretty bad for the Type 90, only having 7 degrees of gun depression and 10 degrees of gun elevation. Just bear in mind that we can use the variable suspension in order to give us a few more degrees of gun depression and gun elevation. This does take time to do, it cannot be done while moving, but if you do get into a position that you do need a bit more depression, this is an option to you. With a stock crew, the turret traverse is 21 degrees per second, and with an ace crew that increases up to 30 degrees per second. This isn't amazing, but it is certainly not a slouch either. It's a little bit slower than some of the other premiums, but I personally never had an issue with it. The vertical targeting speed, or how fast the gun can elevate or depress, is 10 degrees per second with an ace crew. This isn't amazing, but it certainly doesn't let the tank down. As I've already said several times now, the Type 90 does get a fantastic autoloader, which means our round will be reloaded every 4 seconds. Due to the autoloader, even if your gunner gets killed, the gun will continue to reload, and your commander will take over almost immediately, giving you an easy shot at the enemy, as long as they are unaware of this feature. However, I would recommend not getting shot in the first place though. The gunner has a standard 8.8x zoom, and an optional 10x zoom. If you know me, then this is going to be a bit of a sore spot for me. I don't really like zoomed in optics, as I find it gets you tunnel visioned very quickly. Again, especially on the more urban, tight maps that Ad Gaijin have been adding a lot of recently, it can be quite hard to use sights with default high magnification. The commander also does get a gunner sight, which can give you a hunter killer capability, with a standard 3x zoom and an optional 10x zoom. The gunner sight does get a first generation thermal imager, but the commander unfortunately still only has an infrared night vision sight. Due to the gunner's thermals only being first generation and very low resolution, I'd recommend only using the thermals for acquiring targets. I then switch back to the normal sight mode for actually targeting the enemy tank. But what about our ammunition? A good gun is only as good as its ammunition after all. And our stock shell is the GAM-12A1. This is a pretty standard heat of fest round traveling at over 1,100 meters per second and capable of penetrating 480 millimeters of armor. Most tanks at this battle rating are going to be using some sort of composite armor system, or at least using a heavy amount of ERA, meaning that most chemical munitions are pretty much useless. But because this is a premium, we also have access to our other shell, the fantastic JM33. This is essentially the German DM33, which itself is a copy of an Israeli shell. JM33 travels at 1640 meters per second, and can penetrate just over 270 millimeters of armor angled at 60 degrees. While it isn't the highest penning round at battle rating 11.0, that accolade goes to the Israeli M322 round found on the Ram Segal, but I think you'll agree that the high pen of the JM33, especially considering you can fire it every 4 seconds, is certainly nothing to scoff at. 
It can penetrate the front of the Leopard 2A4 and the T72AV terms incredibly easily. And while it obviously won't go through the thickest parts of the other battery-rating 11.3 premiums, as long as you aim for the weak spots, you are almost certainly going to get an easy one-shot kill due to JM33's fantastic spalling as well. But to be fair to this round, pretty much every other tank at the battle rating does have to aim for weak spots, with the exception of the Object 292 of course. But again, just like the mobility, I have no real issues with the firepower of the Type 90B, with the exception of that god-awful base magnification. So boys, should you buy the Type 90B Fuji for the price of 60 British pounds sterling or 70 US dollars? Well, it's hard to recommend anything for the price of 70 US dollars, especially a piece of digital property. But you could say literally the exact same thing about any top tier premium in War Thunder. What I will say is that the Type 90B Fuji is by far my favourite top tier premium at the minute. The battle rating 11.0 lineup, which features three main battle tanks, all capable of firing DM33 every four seconds, I guess four main battle tanks if you add the premium to your lineup, is incredibly powerful. You also have some incredibly influential light tanks, such as the Type 16 and the Type 89. You also have the incredibly good SAM system, the little truck thing. The only real downside is the close air support in terms of the fixed wing variants. But as I said, you can make up for this with the AH-64D Japan, if you are lucky enough to have it. Overall, lads, it's one of those premiums where I can't really tell you that there is any downsides about the Type 90, with the exception of that you have to just separate yourself from your hard-earned dollars. If you are looking to grind out the Japanese tech tree, then the Type 90B is a fantastic choice. I will say though that after battle rating 11.0, the Japanese tech tree does kind of fall off, as you only have two other main battle tanks at 11.7, neither of which are really worth that jump in battle rating, so I'd recommend staying at 11.0, and as I said, feasting on those absolutely retarded Russian mains. Anyway boys, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, GE for War Thunder, as well as a even bigger thank you to my YouTube members. So a massive thank you to Lola Alphonse, Tans, Deboa LX, Dr. Bob, Tomster 013, RS28 Sama, Schlunty, Van Haler, Diogenes, Econ, and Alan Hacker. Once again, lads, a huge thank you to my YouTube members and producers. And if you made it to the end of this video, leave a comment saying Yamato. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member by pressing the join button. Check out the Discord server where I frequently squad up with my members and friends. And don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Thanks again for watching lads, and I'll see you in the next video.